Greetings! This video is part one of a five-part series on exhibit space design. Although Buying Behavior Metrics is not a design company per se, our experience in measurement and analysis of exhibit and retail spaces has delivered a plethora of information which is invaluable in the optimization of these spaces. By optimization, I mean designing a space to drive specifically desired behaviors from target attendees and consumers. For more than two decades, we have been measuring traffic and categorizing behavior. It's clear that design drives specific behavior and it's possible to replicate behavioral patterns through the use of design elements. My simple example is if you design a space with a chair in the middle of it, people will walk into the space and sit in the chair. It's very predictable behavior and one which has been replicated many times over and over again. However, if you put a chain link fence around the same space, you can be assured that people will not climb the fence to sit in the same chair. The design will drive a specific behavior, which in this case is that the chair will not have anyone sitting on it. With this in mind, this video series will examine design criteria by looking first at three commonly misused design elements in space areas. The first design element is referred to as force field and the behavior which it creates is called the force field effect. There are several different types of force fields generated within an exhibit space. The most common type occurs when the aisle carpeting is a highly contrasting color from the stand or booth space flooring. For example, if the aisle carpet is a dark color like black or blue and the stand or booth carpeting is a lighter color such as white, there will be a barrier created where the carpets meet. Attendees will have a somewhat subconscious sense of where the aisle is in contrast to the booth space and will subsequently be cautious about stepping from one carpet to the other. This simple separation between aisle and booth works to create an invisible barrier which keeps attendees out and staff in. The force field effect is a psychological behavioral consequence which creates safe zones. The attendees will feel unthreatened and comfortable walking the aisles and the booth staff will feel safe and unfettered inside the stand. Attendees will stop and look into the space from the safety of the aisle and they often step across the barrier to touch a display or pick up a brochure, but they will quickly retreat back across the line, especially if they sense the threatening approach of a staff person. Frequently, attendees and staff will even interact across the force field line without passing over from one side to the other. Sites such as the ones in these videos are quite common due to this design element and the behavior it drives. I want to clearly point out that force field effect is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, force fields can be very useful in keeping attendees out of areas that are designed for very specific behaviors. For example, if there is a meeting area that is designated for consultations with specifically invited guests, a different color carpet with a table and chair will define the area as a meeting space and prevent the general population from squatting there as a rest area. The force field effect can also be achieved by lighting changes. Bright lighting on exhibit spaces can create lighter and darker areas which attendees and even staff steer away from in order to be less exposed and out of the spotlight. This particular force field effect can be useful because it can keep unwanted attendees out of spaces that exhibitors do not want them to freely flow into. For example, if there's a display that is used for hands-on demonstrations with a technician or a staff expert, lighting the display will keep unescorted attendees out of the spotlight area and provide a private consultation area for the demo. It's often beneficial to use force fields to define an area for a function such as highlighting a specific new product or a one-of-a-kind valuable prototype or even to define areas such as a presentation or demonstration area. Companies like GE Healthcare and Toshiba Medical often use bright spotlight areas to show off their new CT scanners and MRI equipment. Automotive companies like General Motors and Ford often do the same thing to highlight either new automobiles or prototype vehicles. These areas become useful because the outline from the lighting will define the area and drive a specific behavior as attendees will gather around the perimeter and watch the live product unveiling demonstrations. It's similar to the effect that happens in a Broadway theater. When the house lights go down, the stage lights go up, and the audience is driven to stay in their seats and quietly watch the show. 
The theater manager signals that the show is ended by closing the curtains and bringing up the house lights to counter the stage lighting effect. At this point, the audience knows to gather their belongings and leave. Unfortunately, exhibitors who don't understand this force field effect fail to turn the lights down. Consequently, attendees are confused, and since they don't feel comfortable walking onto the stage area, they walk off without ever engaging hands-on with the new product demonstration. A force field can also be created and even magnified by changes in elevation of the floor. Some exhibitors do this because they have electrical or plumbing utility needs for heavy-duty equipment. I've seen this done for things like injection mold presses, printing equipment, working car washes, construction equipment, and even restaurant supplies. When they do this, they build a raised floor and have steps or a rampart up to the booth space. These elevated spaces create barriers to entry as they require the attendees to expend energy just to get to the stand platform. The combination of elevation and light will transform the space into a legitimate stage area. This stage motif can be very effective when doing a presentation or product demonstration. But as previously stated, once the presentation is over, the lighting should be turned down if you want attendees to get onto the stage and engage the product and interact face-to-face -face with the staff members. This is often too much of a commitment for attendees, especially without a personal invitation. Most attendees are too nervous to be on center stage and will subsequently shy away from these stage areas instead of engaging and interacting in them. But exhibitors must realize that not all force fields are created equal, and they deliver a strong message about the company's soul. I've seen prototype cars in a booth surrounded with yellow safety tape in order to prevent attendees from touching the valuable automobile. But think about what this says to an attendee when they see it. They see an item in a setting that's not only foreign to them, but it's in a setting that signals danger. So instead of being seen as a company that's innovative, it's mildly suggestive of a company that perhaps produces untested, unsafe, and even hazardous products and glorifies it by putting them on display. Imagine instead that same automobile on a white carpeted, rotating pedestal in a glass case. Imagine unveiling this new product in an invitation-only presentation explaining how, based on the benefits and advantages of the new offering, the automotive industry will be changed forever. That same product now has an allure of class, sophistication, and elegance, and the company is seen as an innovator leading into the next century. It can send a message about the complexity of the design capabilities of the company. This will keep them looking to the exhibitor for the final delivery of that item. It will also prevent anyone from looking too closely at these objects that are not quite ready for production. When done correctly, the exhibitor can protect its valuable property and simultaneously create an aspirational moment for any product. This will allow the audience to dream of the day they too could fly in a fast attack helicopter or own their own dream car. The final force field generator we'll look at on this video occurs when there's a physical gap between the aisle and the exhibit space carpeting. Some organizers and contractors do this to save money or so that they can display the exhibitor space numbers on the floor. They're either ignorant of the fact that this gap creates a barrier to entry or they're so uncaring and callous to the needs of their customers that they don't choose to help exhibitors. Whatever the reason, the effect is similar to having trenched a small mode around the exhibit space. We've seen attendee behavior ranging from circling the space to cautiously straddling the gap as you see in some of these videos, and even hopping over this gap as if it were filled with alligator-infested waters. If the goal of the exhibitor is to get attendees off the aisle and into the space to engage with product demonstrations or pick up brochures or samples or even to interact face-to-face -face with the staff, it's very important that there is no gap. If the contractor doesn't care and won't fill it in, then get carpet strips to fill the gaps or use some other matching materials such as colored tape. Sometimes it's helpful to position the carpeting in the space such that the gap is on one side only and then it's easier to fill it. At the end of the day, if you don't fill the gap, it will create a barrier and attendees who step over the moat and penetrate the barrier will often retreat to the safety of the aisle when they feel threatened by approaching staff members. Again, let me remind you that sometimes a force field effect can be a good thing. In this example, the green carpeting creates an escape to the lawn, which is exactly what you would want as a lawn equipment provider. In this example, the white carpeting highlights the new innovative product and also separates the demonstration area behind it. 
In this example, it would not have been a good idea for this exhibitor to match the aisle carpeting. The gray carpeting they've chosen creates a much more professional image and projects the soul of the company more positively. Compare that against this exhibitor who has matched the aisle carpeting. You can't tell where the booth ends and the aisle begins. What's nice about this is it also allows them to extend their queue lines into the aisle without any issue from the show. Notice the difference in this exhibit booth space from one year to the next. In this one, they matched the aisle carpeting and you can see that the borders and boundaries of the booth were less visible. Attendees tended to flow freely in and out of the space. We also did an experiment with Toshiba where we withdrew the carpeting up to the displays in order to draw people off. And you can see people actually congregated in the booth as if they were still in the aisles. In summary, force fields should be used cautiously because they drive specific behavior, they deliver a message, and they have a subconscious effect that separates the exhibitor from the attendee. Force fields are subtle barriers, but there are more physical barriers which deliver an even stronger, more dramatic isolation effect, and we will be discussing those in our next video. In conclusion, allow me to thank you for your time in reviewing this material and for your interest in buying behavior metrics. It is our sincere desire to provide valuable offerings to help exhibitors create worthwhile purchase experiences and ultimately maximize their ROI. Please go to our website and explore all the online tools available at bbmgo.com. Thank you.